These are the notes for our atomic structure section of the Atoms Unit. Um, atomic structure hopefully is going to be a review for most of you as you covered a lot of this in physical science. But let's just talk about a couple of things that we know about our atom. In the nucleus we know that we have protons and neutrons, so our protons here are depicted as the green, our neutrons here are depicted as the blue. And then and also in this structure we have our electrons orbiting the nucleus, which again should be a review. So within our nucleus we know that our protons and our neutrons help make up our mass number. And so that's depicted right there in that helium-4. So anytime you see a number next to that name right there with that dash, you know, helium-4, that's telling you that the mass number is 4. You always know that helium has two protons because the proton number equals the atomic number. And our neutrons plus our protons is going to equal our mass number. And we'll talk about when that mass number changes what that is actually called. In this case right here, we know that our atom is neutral because our electrons are going to equal our protons, so there's our electrons there, and that's equaling our protons. So when we look at our symbol and our atomic with our atomic structure right here, so our atomic symbol right there, helium, you don't necessarily need to memorize these, but you'll just get used to them as we go along in class. Here is representing our mass number right here, so it's showing you helium-4 is our mass number. Again, that number is your protons plus your neutrons. And here's our atomic number. Our atomic number is always equal to our proton number. Again, if that changes, you have a different atom. That's really, really important that you remember that. And then notice right here that there's nothing up here in this upper right-hand corner of this symbol, which is simply meaning that this is a neutral atom. So you can assume that if there's nothing up there, that your protons are going to be equal to your electrons, which is depicted in this right here. Here's an example of where we do not have an atom that is neutral. So you're getting shown that it is a plus one charge, which, me which means it's lost an electron. Here's your atomic number, so notice our atomic number changed, so our element changed. Our atomic number is equal to our proton number. If you look on the periodic table, you'll see that lithium is in spot three. Our mass number, again, is the protons plus the neutrons. And if you're seeing it here, lithium-7, that's your protons plus your neutrons. It's really important that people do not think that this is a lithium with a negative 7 charge. Okay, The only time you're going to get your charge symbol is in, as a superscript, um, and it's going to be a plus 1, minus 1, um, plus 2, minus 2 type of situation. So this right here is simply showing you the mass number of lithium, so we know that it's your protons plus your neutrons, and that's what that's showing right there in that symbol. Again, one more time looking at the atomic symbol, so we know our mass number here. We can figure out how many neutrons we have because our mass numbers are protons and our neutrons, and we always know that our protons are going to equal the atomic number, so our atomic number here is 19 and our mass number is 39, so we could figure out the neutrons there. And this is our element symbol, and we know that this is a neutral atom because it's not showing us that this has a charge right there. Our atomic number is just the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. Our mass number is the total number of protons and, nu and neutrons in a nucleus. And our average atomic mass is the weighted average of the masses of the naturally occurring isotopes of an element. So there's just some definitions that you need to know in our atomic structure sec section of our notes. Um, the atomic number is found on the periodic table. Generally, it's going to be the number that's a whole number and that will help you, it's probably going to be maybe in the upper left hand corner um, on your periodic table, but they will differ so it's good that you get to know whatever periodic table that you're using. The mass number is going to be the total number of protons and neutrons again and remember you can calculate that, you're always going to know how many protons you have. If you're not given the specific mass number, you're going to round the atomic mass to the nearest whole number, so it's really important that you remember that. And then the average atomic mass is what's found on the periodic table. It's generally that decimal point number. Um, most of the time it's going to be below the number on the periodic table. And we'll talk about actually how that's found in just a minute. Isotopes are when you have an atom with different mass numbers. So right here notice that our atomic number, which is the number on, in the subscript right here, is never going to change because if our atomic number changes, our atom changes. But right here it's showing us that this is hydrogen 2 and this is hydrogen 1. So these are isotopes because the mass number is different. So your neutron number can vary within an atom. So that's what we call an isotope. 
So our proton number never changes. We know that our proton number is going to be equal to our atomic number. So if I have one proton, I have hydrogen. If I have two protons, I have helium. Our neutron number can change. It creates isotopes. So we just talked about that. And then our electron number can also change. That When we have an electron number changing, we have an ion. So please do not confuse isotopes and ions. Uh, ions are when we have a charged atom. If I have a neutral atom, that means my protons are equal to my electrons. If I have a negative atom, <clears throat> that means I have extra negative charges. I call that an anion. And if I have a positive ion, that means I have taken away electrons. So I'm subtracting a negative charge, which makes it more positive. So I have a cation. The one way I like to remember this is that, number one, cats are positive. That's a, kind of a silly way to remember it. And number two, that cation has a T in there. That T looks like a plus sign. That helps to remember that cations are positive. So if we look at our isotope practice here, so if I have sodium-23, again, that's not telling me I have a negative 23 charge. That's telling me the mass number. And here I know that my mass, num and my mass number right here is 23, and my atomic number is 11. So if I were identifying in here, I know I have 11 protons based on that number. I know I have 11 electrons because this is not a charged atom, and I know I have 12 neutrons. Copper 64, so it's telling me my mass number here, also depicted right here. I know my proton number, so I, and again, there's no charge, so you can figure out your protons, your electrons, and your neutrons. And remember, your neutrons is your mass number, so your protons plus your neutrons is your mass number, so you can figure out how many neutrons you have here. So, for example, you have 29 protons, 29 electrons because you have a neutral atom, and then 35 neutrons. Silver 108. Again, this is not telling you the charge. This is telling you the mass number. Again, depicted right here, we know that silver's atomic number is 47. So we know that silver has, pardon me, I'll go back here really quickly, that silver has 108, uh, Is the mass number is 108. And so you know that you have... So you know you have 47 protons, 47 electrons, and 61 neutrons. That's not going to show up on this, but if you click open the PowerPoint on School Fusion, you're going to go ahead and find that. All right, so what I want you to do is pause the video really quickly and fill in those protons, neutrons, and electron numbers, and then you can check it because I'm going to put up the answers in, in just a second. So pause the video. Okay, so hopefully you paused the video and did that practice on your own really quickly, so let's go ahead and look at the answers. So we know in this example here, we have 11 protons, we have 10 electrons, so a good way to remember your how to calculate your electrons is it's your protons minus the charge, and then you know that you have 12 neutrons. So then 17 protons, 18 electrons, because it's your protons minus your charge, your charge is a negative 1, so it actually ends up being 18 electrons, and then that you have 20 neutrons, and then 38 protons, 36 electrons, and 50 neutrons. So hopefully you did alright with that. Um, the average atomic mass is just the weighted average of the, atom of the atoms of the naturally occurring isotopes. So this is how they get the uh, decimal points on the periodic table. So carbon-12 is the most abundant atom here in, in carbon, but we also have isotopes of carbon as carbon-13 and carbon-14. So there's 1% of carbon-13, and then there's trace amounts of carbon-14. So if we're looking at how this works, how scientists figure out the average atomic mass of carbon, which is 12.01, is they take the mass of carbon-12, and they take the percentage in decimal points, and multiply those two things together, and that gives them 11.868. And then that, what they do is take the mass of carbon-13, and they take the percent of the abundance of carbon-13, and multiply that together, and that gives them 0.143. When they average that out, that, that is where they get the 12.01 as your average atomic mass. So just so you know where that number comes from on the periodic table. Okay, so that ends our atomic mass mini unit notes section here. You're going to be doing some practice in class, so thank you for uh, watching the video and filling in your notes before you come to class.